Hello and welcome. I'm Dwayne Lessner, a technical marketing engineer for Nutanix. Today I want to give you a brief overview of the Prism Element in Prism Central. Uh, Prism Element is our distributed uh, UI that we run on, on Nutanix. It doesn't require any additional software. It's a distributed application that runs on every node. And so once logging into our Prism UI, which is all HTML5, you don't have to load any Java, you're presented with a really nice dashboard of what's going on. You get a breakdown of the, the hypervisor involved. So here we're using ESXi. We have multiple different versions of uh, ESXi forming our cluster today. So that's uh, very much allowed. We have over 28 hosts with eight blocks uh, participating in the cluster. Uh, different uh, product family varieties as well from our early model of the Nutanix 2000. We are all, all the way up to the 6020, so a blend of performance models mixed in with more capacity uh, models as well. So really whatever the, the customer needs. The cluster is generating quite a bit of load as well. And you can also tell uh, by looking uh, within the cluster that even though there's quite a bit of load being generated, like in most environments, there's usually more than enough CPU left over. Uh, we also have a cluster health, which does uh, really slicing and dicing uh, from a troubleshooting perspective, really that quick glance to the infrastructure telling you what's wrong instead of you having to go look for it. Um, and we also have any other additional learning that might be going on in the cluster. So prior to you know doing any more drill down, what I would like to point out here is you know regardless of hypervisor with Nutanix, um, we'll go into another engineering cluster which is Hyper-V. You're presented the same dashboard uh, regardless of uh, where you're operating, whether it's in your data center or at a remote branch office, uh, and the same is true for KVM as well. So the same look and feel, you don't have to go relearn anything, uh, take up any more training dollars to uh, have a multi-hypervisor uh, multi environment. So flipping back over to our puppy food environment, uh, we take a look at cluster health. So really just that easy way to do uh, troubleshooting in your environment. So, you know, what's going on? Uh, color coded uh, for, for ease of use. So here we have, it looks like we have some disks that uh, appear to be um, a little bit uh, taxed, so we can go drill down a little bit further into into what's going on into that environment. Uh, if we go and um, look at these drives, we can go and click on them. We can click on the the left or the right side rather, and see what has been happening. It uh, looks like over the last, uh, really the last two days. Um, we have a lot of failures going on in the environment. So we can drill down further and it looks like what's the cause is, is that those drives are filling up. So, you know, really, really easy to get to. We didn't have to take a lot of time to figure that out. Um, the great part about it is not only does it tell you the error, um, it'll also tell you a uh, cause and resolution and what you might have to do to get it resolved. And so this is all part of the software. Um, there's no additional licensing to get uh, cluster health involved as well. <clears throat> so we'll uh, pop back into um, looking at some of those uh, additional errors. So if you go in through the, the hardware tab, you can uh, drill down and find some of the, the additional errors that are happening. So we'll uh, you can actually get a nice uh, little diagram of all of the different blocks and nodes that make up your environment. Uh, once again, color coded for, for easy use of what's going on. There's a whole lot of data that's available at your fingertips. Um, so if we click on uh, any one of these nodes, uh, we can uh, really get to, to see what's happening. Uh, CPU, memory usage, uh, host name. Uh, you can connect uh, to the remote management of the node itself. Uh, the makeup of the disks, what uh, SSDs and hard drives are making up that node. Uh, the memory available, hypervisor type, so uh, really easy to, to get what you need. Uh, you can click on drives um, and get that information as well uh, from the, the serial number, capacity. Um, and the great part about it is all of this data that's here, you can actually bring it into our analysis area. And so this is really like um, a stock ticker, as you will, or if maybe if you're on Yahoo Finance, 
Um, you can go and pick what you need and start doing uh, correlation. Uh, in this case, we can correlate events and alerts with any uh, performance metrics within the cluster. And so uh, regardless of the hypervisor, um, we have the mechanisms in place to pull the data off the host themselves. You can pick a series of dates um, throughout the, the cluster uh, with the range picker. Uh, then with uh, sliding this bar across, There we go. You can, uh, you know, line up the the results you you need. And once again, you do have the ability to uh, have cause and resolution. Um, there's you can add any type of metric that you want. Uh, in this case, we can add uh, a, a cluster metric um, from our puppy feed environment, uh, multiple cache hits, uh, I/O bandwidth, uh, dedupe rates. Uh, We'll add in IOPS again, just type it in. And uh, away you go. We can scroll down, uh, see the results. There is a, a time bar on the bottom as well that'll uh, help you uh, determine the, the time series. Uh, flipping over to our Hyper-V cluster uh, and looking what we can do there from the, the right side, you can easily expand the cluster as well. And so we don't have any additional nodes in the environment. Um, I'm pretty sure engineering has them all taken up, but so that's just uh, driven through the UI. Uh, not a lot of work, right? It's a non-event in a web scale environment to add a node. Um, you can create additional containers, um, really the, the data stores that will be involved in your environment. So not only can you add the nodes, you can also uh, apply all the advanced settings with just a couple of clicks the number of copies of data that you want in your environment. Do you want to enable compression? Do you want to have uh, the inline dedupe turned on? And also if you want to do dedupe as well for saving capacity. Um, after you go and hit save, it will add all of the, the, add the container into your environment. And the beautiful thing is Nutanix is actually going to take care of all the multipathing. You don't have to worry about LUNs. You can enjoy one giant volume. Uh, and the other thing too that we do allow um, is the ability to upgrade your cluster. So if you think about that, non-disruptively rolling upgrades, um, just like how you would upgrade your iPhone, it connects to the internet, it looks for an update package, and if it has one, it'll download it, it'll distribute that update package to across the whole cluster, um, and then it'll uh, perform a rolling uh, reboot. And it's really that simple. So if you think about you have, uh, especially the puppy food cluster with 28 hosts, um, the time that it would take to do that one by one. Um, and in 4.1, we're actually also enabling the ability to upgrade your hypervisor as well. Um, there isn't any update packages available for us uh, today though. So I'll close out of that. Um, you can uh, add AD Active, um, Active Directory authentication into your environment. Uh, we also have the, the Pulse uh, kind of phone home uh, support so Nutanix can get analytics, uh, no customer data being sent back, uh, so we can help support your environment remotely. Um, if you need engineers to get on the, the line, um, they can do that as well. We also can uh, register a multiple um, Prism Central, so you have the ability to manage multiple clusters, whether they're big or small, uh, in the same data center or distributed. Um, so if we take a look at Prism Central, this is, um, this Prism Central is managing two clusters today. And if we take a look at the, the overview, you get the, the same general dashboard, but really all of that data coming into one central location, you're not having to log into all of your different environments. But once again, same look and feel, uh, cluster health uh, is available as well. If you wanna drill right down into a specific cluster, you can get that as well. Uh, if you want to pop back out, you can um, go up to the top and still get an aggregate of everything what is going on in your environment. Um, you know, so now uh, if you're a multiple, you have multiple sites, whether that's 2,000 VMs, 4,000, or maybe five, whatever the use case may be, you can go off and and uh, do a search through all of your virtual machines in your environment really harnessing that distributed application scale out so you know you're not having to, to waste time waiting for windows to load so um, 
that's what I wanted to show today. Um, please check out Nutanix.com for more information. Uh, it is continually to evolve and change. And also check out Nutanix Bible uh, by Googling that, and it'll take you to uh, Steve Poitras' website. Um, very open and transparent as a company. Uh, all the information and inner workings are available for you because we truly believe what we're doing today is great, um, but we're continuing to move the needle. So uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, hope to have you back soon.